Welcome to the uh, SPAMPA 2023 Summer Convention. And this is going to be our first seminar tonight, a seminar on the Riverside Mill Fire in Providence. Our guest speaker is retired Deputy Assistant Chief Bill Giannini from the Providence Fire Department. Um, Bill was a lieutenant at the time of this fire and lieutenant in Engine 14, the first truck to respond to this fire. So I'll make a round of applause. Thank you, Rich. And after you see this fire, you're going to wonder how I ever got the motor the eye of There's a fire report going on. A copy of the original fire report that I submitted that showed the lights after this fire. It took about a month to print fire. It's about 100 pages long and it's slowed down the room. So feel free to browse through it. You'll also take it out on woman. I need that back. <laughs> and uh, the only other ground rule is a guy here from Providence, by state of fact or something like that. Don't let on that I'm exaggerating, please. <laughs> so um, I am retired. I retired 20 years ago in June of 2003 as the assistant chief of operations. And as you can see, the fire is on December 18, 1989. <coughs> I do want to thank uh, Eric Lawberg, Eric Unibrew, they are there. Eric and Don Schmidt provided photographs for us. I had some nice photographs from the uh, fire inspectors today. One of the companies that came in and did inspection drafts. I looked all over the house for them, I couldn't find them, but they, they came in and they provided some nice photographs. So let's get down to business. The Riverside Mill was in Old Rhode Island. I'm familiar with Only Goats, kind of a business center. Uh, this is Only Goat, actually. And to situate the building, we were a little bit northwest of Only Goat. This is the L shaped building. And this red line is the Lonascotucket River. And the Lonascotucket River is highlighted here because it has a distinct role and it caused us to, it forced us into a particular strategy. This is what the, bit, the land looks like now. This is a satellite shot of it, and the building sat pretty much uh, the L was here, and it extended about this distance. It was quite a lot of building that you'll see. These are the main roads that are coming into Old Eagle Square. This is Valley Street, and the fire station I responded from is kind of up here, up on Apple Grounds. So Valley, Broadway, Westminster. Plainfield Street, Hartford Avenue, and Manton Avenue. Those are the main feeders into Olmville, uh, providing some good access to the fire apparatus. That's just a front page of the fire report. Now, zooming in, the fire was 18 December 89. The official address was 50 Aleppo Street, the Riverside Mill Complex. We were dispatched at 1842 on a box alarm. Box 4167, and report team went all by itself. Box 4167 was in there all the time, and it was a single engine response, so that was not unusual. And just as a little tidbit, and you'll see this later, the recall on Box 4167 was on December 27th at 1536. So we were there over 212 hours. We were there nine days. Two or three days of firefighting, the rest of it was chain of custody. But the inspectors had to come in, the insurance company had to come in, we couldn't leave the site. This is the route Engine 14 took. We're up here, we came down the valley, around the Lane Street, up Manton Avenue, left on Colorado <coughs> Street, and this was the entrance to the Riverside Mill Complex. This is what it looks like today, and it really hasn't changed that much. There's going up Manton Avenue, out of Olinville. And the third into Aleppo Street is just about here. And now we're looking down Aleppo Street. Even if, if this was close range, we did not see any smoke. It was a cold night, very cold, uh, a little bit cloudy, but there was nothing out of the ordinary. As we drew a little bit closer, we could detect the smell of smoke. Uh, we're halfway to the uh, complex now. This is the riverside of the Atlantic Mill into the other shot. 
This would be a man with no less very prominent on the Hampton Island. And coincidentally, I saw the second alarm on this building years before that. But we saved that one. We're going down the Lepo Tree, and this is the turn in to the Riverside Mill Conference. And one of these is the original turn plug. I think it's this one because there was a big office building right in front of the building, which, which unfortunately got torn down. I consider it kind of a historic building just because of the architecture, not because of the fire, but they turned this into a park. And as a result of the fire and the, the, what was in that building, it, it became either a super fun site or a brownfield regulated by the EPA for many, many years until a bunch of leases that got cleaned up and now in the city park. But that, that's where we came <coughs> in. Bear with me on this one. This is the L you saw. The blue L. Okay. That's how it's situated as the north is to the top. But that's the last time we're going to see it this configuration. This is a CAD drawing I did when I started to do the report. And this is Pretty much the way the building was laid out. This was, these were the fire buildings. This office building in the front was the little kitty corner. I don't believe that was the cause of the fire. And a level tree kind of runs this way. <coughs> so we pulled in, I don't know if we went around this way or this way into the office. I forget exactly how it was configured. Probably this way. And we pulled engine 14 into this alley. And this dead end is the glass of that river. Now what you're looking at here, this is like the plan view of the building, and this is an elevation of this space. And this is where the fire originally was found. Before I get into any further detail, just to explain how big this building was, the footprint of the building was over three acres. The floor space was almost nine acres. And the perimeter of the building was 2,990 feet, so 2,000 feet of perimeter. And that's a critical statistic for this particular fire. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And it has to do with the blast of the river. So we went on box 4, 4167 at 1842. We filled in the box at 1844. I think the fire alarm filled it. I don't think I saw the code there until after that was filled in. Uh, I think they got a couple of phone calls after the fire alarm box got back. So that they filled in the rest of the box, so we got in the 80, 15, special hazard one, and so on. And then um, between 1844 and 1848, I call the code red. And I don't remember who called the special signal. If someone called the special signal, probably it was a battalion chief, uh, Chief Dillon. And we got engine six and engine three. At 1850, Sorry, 1849, uh, second round was called. And what happened there was Colorado 2 had their bucket up in the air. Ladder 6 had their area up in the air. Lieutenant Dave Bach and Firefighter Joe Mazer from their elevated position in front of Building 5, and I'll get to a better drawing in a minute, they saw that the fire was not only in the front of the building, but all the buildings in the back were involved in fire as well. Richard's brother, uh, Frank Weather, who was a firefighter at the time, was on Ladder 6, and he was up on that area when he could see other buildings involved in fire, and they collaborated in Ladder 2 time call. Uh, they, they just called the second round without even talking to the chief about it, which was fine. That chief was good with that. So, again, we pulled in this way, and we're, we're facing this. This is, this is where engine 14 was. We were parked around here. Let me see if I got another. And this is where the first fire was. That was the only thing that was blown. We had a slight, slight smell of smoke. There was not a whole lot of uh, smoke visible. And this just looked like a routine code red. So we're, we're hot here, ladder two is behind us. We, we stretch, well, ladder two is a here, yeah, but we first arrived. We stretched the hand line up, the back of engine 14, and we brought it through this door. I had two guys with me. I forced, I was trying to force the door, and they were going to take the line and we were going to walk. We figured there was a flight of stairs there. Go up, knock this thing out. It's quarter to seven at night. You can back by at 7.30 in the evening. Then it would be out of service. While we're waiting, while we're trying to force the door, the, the maintenance guy for this whole facility opens the 
for the prophecy comes up and says, but don't cross the door right now, please. So he said, okay, get the people to the cross. So he sends them down, he's rummaging around for his keys and all, while waiting for them to come back. He peeks through the window, and there were four windows on side four of this building. They exploded violently. And it wasn't a smoke explosion. I mean, you've probably seen the video of the Ultra Company where it's a big boom, that smoke explosion, and the explosion is followed by a big black smoke coming out. What came out of those windows was a blast of fire, and this in the fire report, not the narrative of, the, of, of what I saw initially. This is what I wrote in the report. The explosion followed a few seconds later by a blast of uh, flame shooting out the front window. This blast of, of flame was accompanied by a sound similar to that of a, the roar of a rocket engine. That's how violent this thing was. That's how much energy was coming out of those windows. And we, and we, we pretty much feel if we had not listened to the maintenance guy, if we if he had lost the door, we would have been at least halfway up the stairs, maybe all the way up. And who knows what would have happened. That, that blast could have killed us. We don't really know what the shockwave was like because it just really went over our heads. But that plane, in at least two feet, I mean ten feet out of that building. So putting the initial scene into perspective, it was a clear night, 22 degrees Fahrenheit, it was a west northwest wind blowing at seven knots. We were dispatched at 1842. DOC, the Bureau of Operational Control, that's what file allowed in this province is officially referred to as the DOC. At 1844 hours while we were still en route. We had a slight, slight smell of smoke, the source was not apparent. And again, if it closed, this will end up those two windows on the second floor. We transmitted a code red, we stretched that 200 feet of hand line, we began forcible entry, the custodian stopped us, the second floor windows uh, blew out. <clears throat> By this time, the building companies were there, they were setting up, fire two had their power up in the air, Lieutenant Fox called that second line. We did have some water falling at this time. We had, I think, one master sheet falling and four hand lines falling, and they were all in the This is just me doing that one thing, and this is what you see it. Oh, next slide, it's a sassy. This is how we're set up. We had a line off our truck going to the windows of building five on this side, and there were three hand lines coming off, going uh, into the windows on this side of building five. The big numbers are the building numbers, the little numbers are how many stories Building five was actually further down the road from the passengers and we're able to pour water up the other half. So that goes in pretty much the, the first and last companies there. That's what it looked like initially, once those windows blew up. That explosion evidently took the roof out of building four behind it, and the sky lit up, and this thing just went to town. There's ladder two. That's Lieutenant Bach, that's, that's Firefighter Mesa. They're the ones that, that saw you know, the, the, the fire in the back. There is one of our stream from 1914, or actually we were on this roof initially, uh, but we got the stream going there. This was the second alarm company set up. And again, this is, I, I did this slide just so you can <coughs> see what I just said. This is kind of a reminder. So this was the second alarm set up. Subsequent alarms. So what's happening? What you can see is, you know, we've got a, a, a little bit of fire here, and, and now it's just growing, and we're trying to get it here. And now when we've got a stick up over here, we're going a little bit, you know, a little west, but not just this way. We're, we're starting to head west, and this fire is going west. And then a subsequent alarm, a sub, subsequent companies come in. We're, we're trying to contain this thing from going all the way to the end of this building. And we failed with that. This is the one I asked the river. I said the perimeter of the building was 3,000 feet. The perimeter of the building, half of the perimeter of the building was blocked by that river. We could not get water out of the half of the building that was on fire. And that was a critical thing. That's one of the main reasons we couldn't stop this fire from going this way. If we could have gotten it from both sides, I think we might have stopped it. We could have saved these buildings. 
that were not attended to by the spectacular fire of the war, but as it turned out, they were prevented from doing that. Uh, here's a, a better view. Uh, here's the river. This is half the perimeter. This, this is what we could not get water on. This is, this is the only place we could deliver water. Eventually, this was the other side of the river. This was a, a company operating in a parking lot that came up Concord Avenue. And they were pouring water, you know, giving it a, a valiant try. But how effective that water was, that I really don't know. It, it didn't darken this down at all. This fire burned itself out. There's no other way to explain that. So this was a, a photograph that was taken 24 hours. This was in the province. Uh, evening forward, and I think that night. And that's uh, just to show you uh, this is the province. Uh, this is the last protected river. And this being the length of the building. And this building was the, the last building, uh, the most westerly building, so you know, the fire was down here somewhere uh, initially. So that gives you a picture of, of what it looks like uh, in the after now. That's uh, another shot of. Follow latitude on Lieutenant Mark. That's Joe Major. I recognize these two characters anywhere. <laughs> Joe has to tell him a lot, which was difficult because he would sweat like crazy, even though it was 22 degrees out. This is Lyle, Tower Lyle 1, and it, it looks like they were ahead of latitude, and that can't be because we were in a dead end. Uh, the first way the photograph was taken, they were actually behind latitude, and they had their air gear bucket up at this point as well. This is not long into the fire that they were able to operate. You know, this is unfortunately ladder seven. Ladder seven had to move uh, post haste. It was starting to cook a little bit. And I know they put the jacks up because they wanted to go the truck forward, but I think it, I think that's the chief officer driving that truck. It looks like a white truck to me in a white helmet. So, you know, it all depends on deck here. So there was no rank uh, structure that was going to say, no, I can't drive the truck. And we recognize that truck had a move, and that truck was pulled out. You can see uh, you go back a little bit. Ladder 7, that was Ladder 7. So they were like kind of stuck in this corner, and the raging heat was killing them. Ladder 4 is here. Ladder 4, I think, no, that's Ladder 4, I think. They had to move too. They started to smoke as well. And this, this fire was hot. So Route 6, if you're familiar with you know, Rhode Island, you know, Route 6 was the one behind the Holy Road. This is it right here. And cars on this freeway could feel the heat from this fire. This is probably only, you know, maybe 100 feet or so. Tremendous amounts of radiant heat from this fire. And, you know, that, that's one of the, the physics of what this It's just a scene. I, I think this is a, <coughs> a, a shot from the parking lot for Hartford Avenue. And this building was part of their property, I think. So we're looking at the back of the building. It's the only, the only way I can envision this was with an elevated uh, position. That's just you know, the intensity of this thing was really a working mill or an abandoned mill? It was it was a, a mill that had stopped being a mill and then subdivided into about 90 different businesses. And most of them were jewelry businesses. And a lot of them had old tubs of cyanide. <laughs> cyanide would leak through clean metal or <coughs> Cyanide gas. There was a lot of cyanide gas. Luckily, with a fire like that, it burned off and you know, no harm done. So, uh oh, now we're in North Park. Why, why are we in North Park? That's because of Richard Quetta. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Niagara Quarter building. Anybody know where that is? Anybody familiar with it? 
This thing says it belongs to the reservoir. No, no, that's a reservoir. Okay. In 1989, that reservoir held 12 million gallons. It now holds 24 million. It doubled the size of it in the, in the 90s. But the Long Beach Reservoir has the specific purpose of feeding domestic water supply in, in the farming system in elevations of 140 to 220 feet. The fire hydrants in those elevations. And the high service fire hydrants in process. I don't know if you folks know, Providence has two hydrant systems. One is a high service system, one is a low service system. If you go downtown, you might see hydrants being formed across the street from each other. One has three two and a half inch ports, that's a high service hydrant. The other one has two two and a half inch ports and a four and a half inch port, that's a low service hydrant. And the difference is the high service hydrants are fed from a higher elevation. They have a higher pressure. Uh, so why am I telling you this? 12 million gallons, right? We discharge 12,526,750 gallons, approximately. Now the, 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 the reservoir has two pumps that maintain head. One is on Bath Street in Providence, one is in New Park at uh, Pumping Station. And as we draw water off that reservoir, is automatically refilled. But if those pumps weren't there and we were drawing all our water from the Long View Reservoir at night, we would have emptied that reservoir. And I don't think that that it's ever been done before. I don't think we've ever pumped that much water. Uh, 12 million gallons, 104 million pounds, some other statistics, 32,000 feet of hose. And I know at the end of this file, Lieutenant Paul Healy was in charge of the crew that had to pick this stuff up. And that was quite, uh, you know, roll all that stuff up. And he didn't do all that stuff. Obviously, some of the other companies helped pick up their own hose. That's how much was on the ground at some point during, during that file. 2,300 feet of aerial of added, whether it be an aerial or a power ladder. Or these are the alarms transmitted. We went out at 1842 on 1218. The big call for our box 1167 was on the 27th of December, nine days later at about 3 30 in the afternoon. I happened to be there uh, at 1842. I was working a four hour callback. The Lieutenant Engine 14 had to go to a contract negotiation. I got a call in the afternoon. The deputy assistant chief said, You want to work a short call back? Sure. <laughs> Four <laughs> easy hours of overtime. I was there 22 hours. <laughs> because Costa didn't come back, then Costa was the lieutenant. Uh, when, when he did, he didn't come to end 14. He, he was assigned to something else. So I stayed all night. And then I was in line of six on a seat route. We started at the <coughs> one. We were there. So I, I stayed there. And I took the apparatus in my hands and met them before they expired. Oh, cold and wet night. But these are all the, I'm not going to go through all this, but this is what the alarm transmittal looks like. I pulled these out of the post-red video just to show as an example of, of the intensity of this fire. I have some of this on SD card. Does that help? Yeah. 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 Fires and you know, this is just an intense amount of fire rolling out of this building. And you can see this little column that, that's all heat, and, and and this thing is spinning. And it, it you know, it speeds to that thing and it's wrapping itself up. And now you gotta say, we have a little fire coming that, That's how much draft this fire was creating, and how much heat it put in there. <coughs> It, it made its own little tornado. And that's the only time I've ever seen that at a building fire. This is a sequence of pictures from Code Red. You, uh, you probably see that from Iron Knife themselves, but you know, this is just to summarize where you were. And again, there's that picture of the back of the building, again, the river. Well, thanks, everyone.